Hi, and welcome to another tutorial from Homs. Today we're taking a deeper dive into the blender grain texture. In the last tutorial I glazed over it, but in this tutorial we're going to go in depth. It's a very popular effect in motion graphics and um, very much on trend. I have my balloon created in Inkscape. I've used the ellipse tool to create the foundation of the balloon. Then with a balloon selected, I've converted the Inkscape object to a path. This way we can edit the individual nodes. We first pull the node at the bottom down and pinch the handles associated with that node to the center of that node to create the balloon shape. Then we can move the middle node up and down to finalize our desired balloon shape. The balloon needs shadows and a highlight to be most effective with the grain texture. I use a stroke for the highlight and freehand for the shadow using a bezier curve. For the base of the balloon, we're going to use a rounded square in Inkscape using the square tool. So we just pull the handles at the top right corner of the square to access the round. I'm going to make a rounded square. Then what we're going to do is convert that square into a path similar to what we did for the balloon. And we're going to select the two top nodes of the square and we're going to pinch those two top nodes together. So bring them together, including the handles. Good. and this will give us a triangle shape next we're going to just go ahead and scale the triangle shape that we've just achieved and we're going to scale it out to get the desired shape of the balloon base good and then we're going to add a shadow to the balloon base as well just using the bezier tool Once completed, I imported the vector into Blender as a regular SVG using the quick access shortcut key I created, Shift E. Once imported, I separated each SVG object on the Z axis to avoid artifacts. If you want to know about my unique camera setup in Blender, then please reference this video here. Next, I named the SVG objects. O balloon for the base of the balloon, O balloon shadow for the shadow, O balloon highlight for the highlight, and O balloon base, where O stands for orange. In the next part of the tool, we're going to move on to the grey and texture itself. First, let's open up a shader window and expand our shader viewport so that we can see our nodes better. With our O balloon shadow selected, we're going to decouple our emission shader from the shader view and proceed to add a series of shader nodes. One, the texture coordinate node. Two, the mapping node. Three, the gradient texture node. Four, the Musgrave texture node. Five, a columnx node. And six, a ramp node. Good. After you've added the color ramp node, you have two nodes that we can add for transparency. If you're not going for transparency, then you, you, you all you need to do is enter the color output of the color ramp node into the material output and you're fine if you're going for transparency however you want to add these two nodes which is a mix shader and the transparency shader node good now as you have these two nodes we will be using transparency for the shadow and the highlight so we're going to use them good we want to make sure that the material is also enabled to use transparency so you want to go into the alpha blend option in the material and for it will have a peg there as the default but we want to change a peg to alpha blend so that's the blending options and you're going to change the option of a peg to alpha blend after that you want to navigate to the color ramp node you want to select the second peg in my case that's the dark orange peg and you want to change the alpha of that peg from one to zero Connect the node network in the following sequence. Once done, make sure that your scale is applied, i.e. set the scale to 1. The texture coordinates require this for predictable results. The gradient controls the fade of the grain, while the Musgrave texture controls the appearance of the grain. The mapping of the gradient texture will control the position of the grain's gradient. The mapping of the Musgrave texture will control Musgrave texture itself. So this is good for animating the texture without moving its position. 
The scale of the Musgrave texture controls how fine or how large the grain is, and the detail controls how blurred or how sharp the grain is. I find a smaller value for the scale, and a larger value for the detail works best. Finally, using the ramp to add color and adjust your grain's blend. Rather than just a desaturation decrease, I find that a hue shift or a tone shift does better for the colors when representing with the grain texture. Here is an example of the two colors side by side so that you can see the difference between the variations. You will want to adjust the gradient mapping node to get the Musgrave texture and its fade to be placed in the position you want. Often enough, you may need to tinker with the location and rotation values to get the gradient to look as you intend. The highlight and the clouds were done with the same method. However, the clouds does not have transparency, so there's no need for a transparency or mix shader. Next, we're gonna move on to the wave ribbon animation um, for the ribbon that's at the base of the balloon. Good. For this, we're going to be using grease pencil, but before we do, we're going to create a wave guide and we're going to use the wave modifier to do this. This is optional, but I find this useful to help with follow through animation, especially if you're not comfortable with it quite as yet. So to do this, first we're just gonna create a simple path, right? Um, using Control and A, go to curve and go to path. Then we're going to rotate that path to be vertical. And that would be to rotate R along the Z axis by 90 degrees. Then for my camera setup, I'm going to need to rotate the path by negative 90 degrees on the X axis, apply the rotation with Control and A, then rotate the path on the X axis, X -axis again by 90 degrees. This is only necessary because of my unique camera setup. If you're using Blender as a native camera setup, you won't need to do this. Next, we're going to apply the wave modifier to the path. Then adjust the arm parameters of the wave modifier, the height, the width, and the narrowness to achieve the desired wave that we want. Then we want to position the, the start of the oscillation of the wave to the top or bottom end of the path. We don't want it oscillating in the middle, that will give us a weird result. So we're gonna have to move the position to the top or bottom. And then lastly, we're going to adjust the speed of the wave to slow down or speed up the wave in accordance to what you want for your wave animation. I slowed it down um, because it's a slower speed, but you may have different results, um, different styles, depending on what you want your animation to look like. The scale of the path also affects the predictability, the predictability of the wave. So if you haven't applied your scale and you're getting weird results, try that first. Then we simply use the wave as a guide in the grease pencil to assist with our ribbon animation. Make sure, you in, make sure you're in draw mode, that the strength of your brush is set to one or 100% and that the pressure sensitivity is off if you're using a tablet or drawing monitor like myself. Once finished, you should have something that looks like this. Well, this is not the method that I use because I'm okay with um, follow through animation. I think this is excellent for beginners wishing to learn follow through, but need a guiding hand. Once this is done, we can move on to the final part of the animation. On to the final part of the animation. For the final animation, we're just going to go over the final changes. Clouds were added, different color balloons were included. We see here purple and we have blue, and a seamless animated pattern was created with the balloons. To create the seamless pattern, I parented three balloons of different colors to an empty and looped the vertical animation of the empty. I did this three times for three different sets of balloons as seen here. I used cycles in the animation modifiers tab and a linear animation interpolation so the transition was seamless. 
I suggest using guides to help place where all three balloons should start and end when dealing with this type of loop. This concludes the grain animation tutorial. If you enjoyed this tutorial, give it a thumbs up. If you have a better way to complete a step, put it in the comments so that we can all learn. Thanks for watching and until I see you again with another tutorial, get up and design a new dawn. Later.